Block Radio's Coach V Show welcomes Marushka Hershon to the Coach V Show. Welcome Thank to you. the show. Marushka, I told you when we first connected to send your whole bio. Because there's not a lot of folks out there doing what you have done so far. But being the rising star for the Island Block Radio's Coach V Show and having you on this show has going to bring major value. But congratulations on all you've done. But what you are about to do is what we applaud you for most. Thank you so much. You know, it's really an honor to be on this show. I mean, I can't wait to tell a bit more about my story and just talk with you about it. Awesome. Let's start Tahiti. Let's mm -hmm. talk roots, family history, and the passion that you have for family and that your family has for you. Start there for us. Yeah, well, you know, I really come from a family of community builders. You know, on mm. my mother's side, one of my uncles was a president of Tahiti, Alexandre Leontief. Another uncle on my mother's side was a, a pretty much a mayor of one of the, the towns in Tahiti. On my father's side, you know, there's some deep roots in the Tuamotu, in in the islands of Rarotonga and Cook Islands as well. So I've always had this desire to give back to the community. It just felt like it's part of my family's traditions to give back. So you're the first person to ever come on the Coach V show that is related to a president of a nation. We got to give it up for that. I mean, nobody else has ever come through the show that's been the president <laughs> of a nation. So let, let's, let, let's start here in terms of being in, born in Tahiti but then you went to school here all the way through kindergarten through high school, attending French private schools in L.A. and Chicago. What is that all about? Oof, you know, it's I definitely navigated three worlds. That's what it felt like, right. you know. Uh, at home, it's a Tahitian household, you know, where my parents are speaking Tahitian and French. When I go to school, I'm surrounded by French expat students, you right. know? And so all my schooling is in French. Like, literally, my whole curriculum was in French from kindergarten through 12th grade. I didn't even do an American curriculum. I did the French baccalaureate. <laughs> it was as if I was going to go to college in France. And then, of course, living in LA and Chicago, I'm surrounded by American culture. So I just felt like I was constantly navigating these three worlds and in that navigation you 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 found this passion for filmmaking what, what was that like and how did that start well you can imagine in Chicago there weren't many other Tahitians and in my school in Chicago there are only French people and so I just constantly felt like there was a lack of Pacifica representation everywhere I went People usually did not know what a Tahitian was. They didn't know what a Polynesian was, what a Pacific Islander was. I didn't see it in the media. I didn't see it in movies. My mm. history courses didn't even talk about Oceania. And so it really wanted me to go into that. And I actually followed in the footsteps for a little bit of one of my cousins in Tahiti who was in film. And she was directing and producing short films on Tahitian communities. Right. Okay. And then now the college application and acceptance process. USC, University of Southern California, right? Mm -hmm. Fordham. Mm -hmm. Is that the Fordham in New York in the it Bronx? Is. Okay, I know where that is because I'm a <laughs> Davis guy, so I do know academia, <laughs> but I'm, I'm more on the Pomona Hood side of the academia. All good. But still. <laughs> and then UC Berkeley and Stanford. That's quite a crew in terms of institutions of higher learning. Talk about the application process and your feelings and how you selected who you went with. Yeah, it was interesting because unfortunately my college counselor kind of laughed at the options at where I was trying to accomplish, you know? So I remember actually going into that meeting really nervous, you know, insecure little high school students saying, I want to do film. I'd love to go to USC or somewhere on the West Coast. And I remember having a little smirk on their face and I was really sad, but you know, I had to find that courage from within and my family's mm. strength to recognize that, you know, sometimes people may um, not believe in you, but you have to believe in yourself. You need to have your family's support as well, your community's support. So, you know, I powered through, recognized that I had strengths 
So I did my application, I did research on my own, you know, I really made sure I found as many resources as I could. Applied, didn't have a great SAT, ACT score, but that didn't stop me, you know, I was like, I'm gonna shoot for the stars. I don't care what people say. If they say I can't try and reach this, I'm still gonna try. It's worth Confused. every effort. Right. And um, it was definitely an interesting process. Definitely found as many resources as I could, and it was a true honor, of course, to get accepted into these great institutions. Right, and then, I mean, you passed up, I think USC, Steven Spielberg went to USC, right? I, I mean, know. that's a big time <laughs> filmmaking school right next to Hollywood, but you chose Stanford. Mm -hmm. that, that's awesome. And so, in that, <clears throat> why Stanford? You know, it was a very difficult decision to make because I did recognize that USC had an incredible film program. But real talk, finances. You know, I, I was thinking about my financial future and I recognized that Stanford somehow gave me the best financial aid package. I literally almost had no debt coming out of Stanford. That is awesome. So that, for my family, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of money, so that made a lot of sense for me. And okay. it was a great choice. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, to have those kind of options for us and, and my, myself having two kids to create that kind of value, know where you were going. And we're, we're only getting started here, but to know where you are going at such a young age and then have the courage, what I call in coaching and in training, the audacity to go, why not me? I don't care what exactly. the counselor says. I didn't care when, when I told people, yeah, I'm going to go be a life coach and a motivational speaker. And they were like, coach, you need one life coach. You ain't going to be one life coach. <laughs> like, what? I mean, this is my uncles, right? My grandfather telling me, man, you're, you're in a good spot. Mm -hmm. But you saw something and you went out there and got it done. And we applaud that. A rising star is a person that is quickly growing in popularity, importance, and support in a particular field. In studio tonight, we will keep it going. On the Island Block Radio's Coach V Show's Rising Star Marushka Hershon, or as no Notorious B.I.G. said, if you don't know, now you know.